and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers are the old way but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Well, with all this squash and zucchini coming on up and people getting quite a bit of it already. And some of you may not be getting any yet, but it's a coming, I grant you. Uh, I thought it was time for another zucchini squash recipe. You can't get too many of those, that's for sure. And I'm going to be doing several as time goes on this summer. And uh, before we get into our little flea market find and a little tour of what we've been digging up out of the garden, let's make our recipe. And some of y'all were asking me about my zucchini fritters and those are delicious. This is a little take on the fritters, but this is uh, zucchini tots, and it's kind of like a, what you might say, a tater tot, but you could also make these into flat fritters if you wanted to. Uh, this is maybe just got a few more ingredients in it that maybe just a regular fritter does, but they're so good. So let's get started. And first thing we're going to do is just grab you a medium, one medium zucchini is all you got to have, or a yellow squash because you can use either one. Now your zucchini is going to have more moisture in it than your yellow squash will. So I've already started shredding this, and this is a, a just a regular size medium uh, zucchini. And I'm using my handy dandy shredder here. If y'all been with me with uh, other videos, y'all seen me use this. And there is one in my description box in my Amazon store, if you're interested. It's not exactly this one, because uh, this one wasn't bought off Amazon. I don't think my daughter gave this to me. I think she got it at Walmart several years ago. But there are some on Amazon. And I use it all the time. So anyways, just shred up your medium zucchini. And I did it on a paper towel. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather it up. And I'm going to take it, and I'm going to squeeze it. Whoops. You want to squeeze it, but you don't want to get a hole in the bottom of it, that's for sure. So just squeeze as much of that uh, water out as you can. And you ain't going to get all of it out, that's for sure. Just get as much out as you can, and just squeeze it real hard, and try not to rip a hole in the bottom like I, <laughs> like I did. I think it, things just like to test me sometimes. But I don't let it bother me. I just keep it going. But I'm just going to keep squeezing this. Until I get as much out as I can. Now these are going to be cooked in the oven. They're not going to be cooked on a deep fried or anything like that. Now you can. You can deep fry these. But uh, I'm going to stick mine in the oven today. And I've got my oven heated to 400. So we're just going to put that, now that we've got most of the liquid out of it, I'm going to put it in a bowl. And we're going to take, let's see, I need to get me a decent spoon. We're just going to take our zucchini, and I've got a cup of shredded cheese. I've got a fourth of a cup of Parmesan. I've got... A teaspoon of salt, I got a teaspoon of black pepper, and a teaspoon of garlic powder. I've got two beaten eggs. Right here, I've got a fourth of a cup of uh, just panko breadcrumbs, and then I've got just regular breadcrumbs. You can use regular or you can use Italian breadcrumbs, just whichever you have, but there's a fourth of each. And uh, I'm going to use this right here to scoop them out but if you don't have one of these just use two spoons and just kind of scoop them out and 
or you can roll them with your hand either one it don't matter it'll all work so let's get started mixing this up so in our bowl we're just going to throw all this together i'm going to go ahead and put my two beaten eggs in And you always want some kind of binder in with your, either your fritters or however you're making it because it's just like if you were making meatloaf or something, you need a binder in it. And, uh, there is, there's a fourth a cup of breadcrumbs and a fourth a cup of panko. You could use all panko, you could use all breadcrumbs. It'll work either way. This gives it a really good texture. I got a cup of cheese. You can use any cheese that you want. I got a fourth a cup of parm, Parmesan cheese, teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of garlic powder, and a fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper. You could put a little bit of onion powder in here if you wanted to. Um, just any kind of seasoning that you like. You can put a little bit of hot sauce in here if you wanted to. We're just going to stir this up good. Our um, people south of us, their green beans and squash were coming up off a lot earlier than ours. So we're just kind of like in between everybody. And ours is really starting to come off now. And then people north of us will be coming probably after us with their squashes and stuff. Now your pumpkins and your butternut, butternut squash and uh, your winter squashes, of course, come off good in the fall. But your things, this is a summer squash, your zucchini and your yellow squash. My cucumbers are really starting to, to do good. Picking the green beans. I think it's going to be a pretty decent year. Now, we had a lot of rain here recently, but uh, it's, it's finally quit a little bit. Okay, I got that stirred up good. It's good. You can see how moist it is, and it's going to kind of come together. And my cutting boards are rocking back and forth and driving me crazy. So you can see the, the texture of it. So it come together about that easy now we're going to get our sheet pan out and i've got parchment paper on it you can just use a cookie sheet and put your spray it or whatever you need to do and we're going to start putting our tots or what you might call fritters on our sheet pan okay i'm just going to scoop these up with my cookie scoop just put them out just like that spread them out just a little bit I've got plenty of room they're not going to expand or anything but that way they get good and crisp around the edges and we got enough here for two, two sheet handfuls so we're going to put these in a 400 degree oven and we're going to cook them for about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, I'll see for sure when I get done how long it took in my oven. And then we'll, uh, we'll try one. See what kind of dipping sauce we might use with it. Okay, the beepers went off. And we're going to get these babies out of the oven. Ooh, they smell good. Yummies. They're good and brown on top. And when I push down on them, you can tell that they're good and done in the middle because they don't smush in. Let's see if I can look at the bottom. The, the bottom's good and brown too. So it's been 20 minutes and I'm going to say they're done. Okay, you can see how good and brown they are on the bottom and around the edges. They're still soft though. 
They look really good. You know, these would be good as an appetizer, too, for a potluck or a party or something like that. Because what we're going to do with them is we're going to dip these little babies in some marinara sauce. But I'm going to get the rest of the 12. It's going to make about 24, I think. So they are all out of the oven and looking good. You can see they're not too puffy. We've got a good scald on the bottom. And I've done eight, four, or five of them. <laughs> if that tells you anything, so this will be another one. And I'm telling you, I'm dipping it in marinara sauce. You can dip it in anything you want to. Ketchup, just whatever. But whatever you dip it in, it's going to be good. Those are good. So whether if you call it a fritter, a zucchini tot, or just whatever, you call it whatever you want to. I'm just going to call it good. Very delicious, very moist. Y'all have to try them. And I'm feeding my face. That's why you're getting the talking hand right now. <laughs> but these are delicious. These aren't just your regular old-fashioned fritters. Using the panko and the breadcrumbs. Usually when I make fritters, I just use plain flour. But I'm telling you, these are well worth making. They're delicious. You can put you a little bit of chopped up onion in it. Uh, next time I'll put a little bit of onion powder in it. It's got plenty of garlic in it. You put in it what you like. They're delicious. Promise me that y'all try these guys. I promise you that you won't be disappointed. So, how about let's go ahead and let's see what Miss Lori, Mr. Brown found at the flea market. And then we're going to take a little stroll out in the garden. today and uh, about seven o'clock at night and I'm out here digging a few potatoes these potatoes have been blown down twice and this particular bed right here is just some compost wood chips that we had made and I come out here I had a few potatoes left over from the two rows over there and I made a just a pile and I had some potatoes left over so I just stuck them in this pile and most of them were red potatoes. I believe I've got a roll of Yukon and a roll red. And there's probably some Yukon in this here too. And I just dug up, I don't know, about four plants there a while ago and got them Yukons out of there. The old ground's getting pretty hot. Them plants were already dead and, and drying up and I went ahead and dug them up. These here are basically ready, but I mean, they probably could grow a little more, but like I say, the old sun's really getting hot. It seems like they're early this year. Seems like we normally dig at the last of June. It's about the middle of June. Uh, old timers say you used to get them dug up before the 4th of July because if they got rain on them, they'd rot. But I don't know if that's so or not. It seems like if you got good soil that drains off, they'll keep, you can dig them up in the wintertime, I believe, if they don't start sprouting in the fall. But <clears throat> anyway, We'll dig a few out of right here and see if you see what they look like, maybe. 
What'd I dig up out of here a while ago, dear? Snake. A snake. <laughs> I want you to look at them potatoes on there. Can you see them? I can see them. How many inches of compost do you think you had there in that pile? Oh, I had probably, when I started, probably it was about three feet wide, and the bulk of it was probably a foot and a half deep. You got some pretty good potatoes out of it. Yeah, for just for the last minute. We just had them left over, seed potatoes, and uh, couldn't give them away. So... I hauled some compost down here, and I think I'll do some more of it in the future. You never know what what I, kind of weather, what's going to be going on, what, how everything's going to turn out. But I do believe covering the rolls up with the straw, though, it keeps them uh, moist and it keeps them dark. I mean, you have to keep, they don't need sunlight. No, and the straw was put out here when it was having the frost, late frost. You remember that? Yeah. We were having a big late frost. If I find that snake and throw it on you, what are you going to do? I'm going to walk backwards. You see this right here? That's a big old worm. That's a big old worm. You need to keep them in there. That's not, that snake a while ago was, wasn't much bigger than that. That worm acts like a snake, don't he? You got to get him out of here. He'll mess around and get under me. You'll squish him. I'll squish him. Do what? You've been picking green beans, right? Yeah, I'm picking some every day. And I got a bunch of blooms. And pretty potatoes, that's just the way we like them. We got a few bacon potatoes out of the Yukon. Baseball size and smaller, we really like them. Yeah, I don't like them really when they're real, real big. In fact, I love new potatoes, even smaller than that. And these done really well. We had some for supper tonight, and they're just like anything any better except fresh tomato out of the garden and then potatoes. They just, they taste like the earth. They just taste so good. They were so good tonight. We had fried squash, potatoes, and homegrown pork cooked on the grill, didn't we? Mm-hmm. I cooked on the grill, and now we're out here trying to work it off. <laughs> well, it's a good thing the humidity's not 110%. It's not as bad as it has been. I'm still sweating bad, but it ain't too bad. I'm going to get back to picking beans.
Well, there's a little picture down here that I've been looking at. And I just love stuff like this. And I like to use it in the kitchen. I like to use it in my videos. It just, it looks old. It's not very expensive. I think I'm going to get this. I like it. All kinds of books to read. Daniel Steele. Any flea market I ever go to like this always has a lot of books. Daniel Steele books. And baskets of all sizes and colors. And I sure don't need any more baskets, but I love that one right there. That looks like an old laundry basket. This one's kind of different. And I spied this big old rooster on this table, and I absolutely love him. That would look good in my kitchen. A lot of different little antique tables and stuff like that. And I like this dining room table too, and chairs. But I absolutely love this big rooster, but not for 50 bucks. I don't love him that much. But I do like them. We always call these bean pots. Put your beans in them and put them in the oven and cook them in the oven. A lot of different antique cooking vessels here. A couple little teapots. These little cookie jars, I just love them. I just don't have a place for all this stuff, and I don't need a, none of it, but I just really think it's pretty. If I had a place for cookie jars, I, I think I'd start collecting them. And if you are somebody that loves replicas of the old little toy trucks, they have some of the neatest ones right here at this flea market. And these are replicas, they're not the, the real antique trucks, but they're just really neat. There's just all kinds of stuff here. Um, you could come here for Christmas, for Christmas gifts, for birthdays. Just anything. They just have everything here. This little man and woman is, they're paper mache, and I'm just floored at how pretty they were. What a good job with them. This is my favorite corner in this whole flea market because this is where I come and find my cookbooks. And you know that I need some different cookbooks. Y'all know that. But I always find one or two, three or four or five. Of course, Mr. Brown, he's found a few things. He likes looking at the old kettles and pots and tools and all that stuff. That's his favorite thing to look at. I like the old jars. The old pressure canner. And I've seen this, and um, I don't need it for anything, but maybe just put it up on a shelf. It does have a crack here on both sides, but you know what? It would be good to put utensils in, or just like I said, just put it up on the shelf, because they only want $3 for it. So for $3, I think I'm going to put it in the cart. Danny loves these old saws. Here he is looking at more tools. The old jars and soda bottles. And I ended up buying the old lard can. I just wanted four bucks for it. Here's the old Dutch oven. It's got a beehive lid to it. 
to Audi. They want a good chunk for it too. And look at this. This is a um, a shredder, and it's all metal. Looks like it'd do a good job shredding cabbage or a potato or something. I'd love to have this tricycle on my porch. This place is probably one of the cleanest, well-kept flea markets I've ever been in. This is Mom Paul's in Hoxie, Arkansas. They've got everything. So I hope y'all enjoy spending time with us, guys. We always love spending time with y'all. We love y'all. God bless. And have a wonderful, wonderful, safe summer. Do a little fishing. A little swimming. Cooking out. But be safe.